Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about borrowed chords. Now, we already addressed borrowed chords last semester, and we certainly looked at them in uh, some detail. So I'm not going to belabor the point. I'm going to do a quick kind of review of borrowed chords. This should initially be material you already essentially know. And then we're just going to see if we can find a couple of situations where you might encounter borrowed chords and how would you voice lead them or make them work. We're just going to talk about that for a few moments as well. So first of all, what are borrowed chords? Let's remind ourselves. Borrowed chords is a situation where you are borrowing a chord from the parallel major or minor. Now remember, parallel keys share the same tonic note. So essentially we're saying C major, C minor, B major, B minor, F major, F minor. And those chords, if you think about it, you would write out your F major scale, and then you could write out an F minor scale underneath it, and you could create triads above each note of the F major scale and each note of the F minor scale. And if you were going to write a piece in F major, you would pick the triads from the F major scale in various orders in order to create good progressions. If you were going to create a piece in F minor, you would take the same triads from F minor, you would you have created triads above the scale degrees in F minor, and you would take those triads and you would use them in any particular order. Some orders work better than others to create good, strong progressions. And that's standard operating procedure. You've been doing that with diatonic chord progressions in major and minor for the last few weeks, so no problems there. What this is suggesting is that you could occasionally take a chord from the parallel major or from the parallel minor key and just drop it in to a piece that is, would not normally have that chord. So you could be in C major and just drop in a chord from C minor. Or you could be in F minor and just drop in a chord from F major. Certainly this happens in music theory and in, and in music practice quite a lot. It happens in the common practice era, as we saw last semester. It happens a lot in rock and pop music, particularly if uh, that rock and pop music is, is created by the Beatles. So this is not an uncommon occurrence, and we should be aware of it. Um, so to that end, let's just remind ourselves, if we were in major, what would our chord qualities be? And again, there should be nothing here that should be a surprise to anyone. These are just the chord qualities you would find diatonically in major. You would find a major 1 chord, a minor 2 chord, a minor 3 chord, a major 4 chord, a major 5 chord, a minor 6 chord, and you would find a diminished 7 chord with a diminished minor 7-7 seven, seven chord. And that's important because that becomes important when we start talking about borrowing, the fact of the, that, that, that we have a 7th in place is important for borrowing. So we'll get to that in a moment. Now let's uh, review the minor chord qualities. In minor, the one chord is minor. The two chord is diminished. The three chord is major or sometimes augmented. The four chord is minor. The five chord is usually major because of the raised leading tone. It could be minor in some uh, rare circumstances. Uh, the sixth chord is major. The seven chord is also diminished, but when you add the seventh in minor, you create the uh, the seven fully diminished seven chord. Now, <clears throat> it is also worth noting that if you do not raise the leading tone, the seven chord is major. And that is worth keeping in mind because that then creates another opportunity for borrowing. So the way borrowing works is if you already have something, you don't need to borrow it. If what uh, you are trying to borrow, one assumes, is something different from what you have. And so that's how it works. The one chords are different from each other. So indeed, there can be some borrowing back and forth. Ask me in class about a great example of borrowing a one chord from major in minor at the end of a piece. Uh, don't forget to ask me about that in class. The two chords, they're different, and certainly, therefore, there can be some borrowing. You could have a diminished two chord, borrowed from minor, appear in major. That could happen. The three chords are clearly different. There can be some borrowing there. The four chords are different. Borrowing can occur there. The five chords are generally the same, although, if you borrowed the minor version of the five chord, indeed, it's different, and that would be a possibility. So occasionally, it's rare, but occasionally you'll get some borrowing there. Uh, the six chords are different. Borrowing can occur. You can borrow a major six chord 
from minor when you are writing in major, where you would expect it to be a minor six chord. And borrowing can occur with the seven chords, especially if it's seven seven, or you're using the major seven chord and not raising the lead tone. Borrowing can occur with the seven chord. So essentially, there's a lot of places where potential borrowing can occur. And indeed, composers throughout the common practice era experimented with this to a greater or lesser extent, depending on the aesthetic surrounding the particular music they were writing and the effects and the drama that they were trying to create at any given time. How do you deal with these borrowed chords? Well, quite honestly, it's very simple. What you do is you simply insert the borrowed chord where you would normally use the original chord that you had. So, if you have a chord progression that, say, goes 1, 4, 5, 1, you can choose to borrow a minor 4 chord and your progression would become 1, 4, we simply put B or BC underneath it to show it's a borrowed chord, 5, 1. Now in terms of voice leading, you deal with the same voice leading guidelines, you would be careful about your doublings, just making sure you're, you're doubling logical notes. Generally if you're going to start changing notes, which is what's going to have to happen here. You're going to have to chromatically alter a note. You're going to have to make the, this chord minor, which means you're going to have to add an accidental. So we usually don't double notes that we've changed. That's a, not a hard and fast rule, but it's a good general working guideline. Um, and so you would just voice lead uh, exactly how you would voice a four chord. You would just voice it and make it minor instead of having it as major. And that's generally the rule for any type of borrowing. If you're going to borrow any of these chords, first of all, come up with a logical functioning progression in the original key. And then simply insert in the borrowed chords in place of the chords that you have in the original key. Sometimes composers will go just one step further and they will say, you know, not only am I going to borrow a chord, but I'm going to borrow it right in close proximity to the original chord. So I'm going to have a progression that goes 1, 4, then I'm going to go to minor 4, then 5, 1, because that is quite a dramatic change from major to minor. And again, depending on the circumstances, on the particular aesthetic or the particular dramatic situation the composer is trying to convey, they may want to put something like this in and kind of juxtapose the major and minor feeling. I think it's fair to say that in this time period, as long as the tonic remained the same, composers didn't really feel that they were losing a sense of the groundedness of the key. And therefore, borrowing is not really a modulation, it's not changing key, it's simply just slightly colouring major with minor, or slightly colouring minor with major. And therefore, it's not really considered a major shift in tonality, it's really just considered a colouring of what you already have. So sometimes you'll have entire sections of music. Uh, Haydn, well, many composers in his time period, will have a section of music in major and then immediately repeat that section of music and have it in minor. So that you get that really dramatic contrast of the same music sounding in major first and then in minor afterwards. That's also quite common as a way of uh, using borrowed material, colouring your music, but not really losing a sense of the groundedness of the key because the tonic is always the same. You're dealing with the same tonic because you're dealing with parallel major and minor. Take some of these borrowed chords. What you should do is, is come up with some good, solid diatonic chord progressions and then look for places that you could insert a borrowed chord from the parallel minor. And we'll talk about that a little bit in class, see if we can uh, figure out some situations. I'll give you some examples. We can kind of work through a few examples together, see what we come up with. Thanks very much.